Hello everyone, welcome to Mastermind. So from this video, we will start a series to understand Indian constitution from the constitution itself, not from any other source. We'll read the raw constitution as it is and then try to understand what the articles are saying. This is very important because what happens is, most importantly, let's say in prelims or even in mains, most of the times, articles are asked directly and not every article will be of that important also for example they are mostly asking related to let's say fundamental rights or related to president or related to speaker supreme court etc most of the times they are asking questions like this but they might ask conceptual questions also that is so and so article says about so and so permission which has to be taken so and so article says that so and so thing has to be done etc so if we are not reading the articles then it might not be that easy for us to go ahead with that particular question and hence we will start reading from the constitution only i'll try to simplify it as much as possible because the language which has been used in the constitution is a little complex a little complex in the sense that they have to concentrate on every individual word which they are using in constitution for example if they are saying that is it means something shall be why they are telling shall be not must be so there are lot of changes and there are lot of details in this particular constitution also which we have to understand in detail so in that way let us start with the part one itself now before we proceed with part one let us first understand the schedules of indian constitution schedules of indian constitution this is one of the most repeated questions at times for us the schedules of indian constitution why have why should we discuss schedules because we will be recalling them and we'll be trying to link with them very constantly and before we start with the first article of the constitution itself let us understand the schedules now to remember all the schedules there is a mnemonic which everyone uses and that is tiers of old pm so if you are not aware about that don't worry we will understand from the basics itself so in this tiers of old pm so it has to go in this particular order only because it is first schedule second schedule third schedule fourth schedule something like that till 12th schedule okay so we have to understand what is tiers of old pm first so in the first schedule it speaks about the states and union territories the states and union territories and hence it is a first schedule t for territories in case of e it stands for emoluments emoluments whatever is the allowances which is given whatever is the privileges which are given to president of india governor of the state speakers deputy speaker chairman deputy chairman etc are mentioned under second schedule and in case of a a stands for affirmation vote oath and affirmations oath and affirmations that is whatever is the oath which union and state ministers take the candidates for election to the parliament and state legislatures whatever oath and affirmations they take are mentioned in the third schedule and in case of fourth schedule this is very important because here it says about rajya sabha seats rajya sabha seats don't worry about the uh, size of these things over here because it is given properly in the article itself just that you uh, concentrate on the words which you have to remember and recall in the examination in case of fifth schedule it is saying yes yes stands for scheduled areas scheduled areas and scheduled tribes one of the most repeated schedule which is which is this fifth schedule and in case of sixth schedule it speaks about other tribal areas okay it says about other tribal areas so in this case other tribal areas includes four states you have to remember it as am tm it stands for assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram you have to remember that there is no manipur over here so it is other tribal areas okay it deals with administration of tribal areas in the states of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram in case of seventh schedule seventh schedule speaks about the federal structure okay federal structure whatever is the list we are having 
that is union list state list concurrent list the, those has been mentioned in seventh schedule in case of eighth schedule it speaks about official you uh, in case of o you have to remember it as official languages or recognized languages you have uh, it is just uh, recognized languages that is there are originally there were like 14 languages in the schedule but at this point of time there are around 22 languages in this so this also has been asked in the examination next ninth schedule ninth schedule stands for land reforms you have to remember it as land reforms land reforms so there is a basic structure of uh, of indian constitution which is related to this land reforms we will discuss about that in uh, further uh, articles while we were while we are discussing about those but you just remember it as l for land reforms and it is in ninth schedule so actually the constitution's first amendment so constitution's first amendment act which happened in 1951 that was saying that whatever provisions government puts under ninth schedule that cannot be questioned by judiciary that they said but later on that came under judiciary as well so next 10th schedule speaks about defection okay it speaks about anti-defection law it speaks about anti-defection we'll understand about these also later on. and p stands for panchayats and m stands for municipalities m stands for municipalities see here because it is the first part we are going a little slow over here you just have to remember these keywords which will be very very important for us and you will know in the further videos why it is that important so we'll take a few articles only and then we'll try to decode them what they are trying to tell so i hope till here it is very clear let us start with the part one itself let us start with the part one in which we'll start with first article itself now you just concentrate on the letters and the words over here so what is the first article saying it is saying that name and territory of the union name and territory of the union now how will you be able to distinguish between what article is speaking about what thing or what part is speaking about what thing so for that you just remember that there is a empty place over here there is a empty place over here let's call it as earth for now to understand let's call it as earth first thing when the country has to be there we have to know what part of this earth will be our country okay so what part of this earth will be our country so let us say that this part will be our country so first one is to know what part of the world will be our country next one would be to understand who will be part of this country who will be part of this country third one is whoever is living in this particular country what are the rights which they are having so i hope you are understanding where we are going later on we'll understand about what are the duties which they are having later on we'll understand about how they are governed how they are governed first we have to understand about the land where they'll be uh, where they'll be staying or what is the uh, meaning of that particular region what is the nation saying etc so in this also first part says about the union and its territory the union and its territory so the article is saying name and territory of the union see there are three most important articles under this article one article one sub clause one then two then three article number sub clause one then two then three usually when we are reading any other book also we'll understand that okay the first article says about india that is bharat shall be union of states but there are other two things also which the first article is saying so article 1 sub clause 1 says about india that is bharat shall be union of states so when the constitution was happening when the constituent assembly was uh, was drafting the constitution at that point of a time there was lot of debate as in what the name has to be for this particular country for our country what name has to be a few of them they were saying it has to be india a few of them they wanted to go with bharat which is our older name actually so the this is derived and this is what we have been with so that there is no confusion if we are saying india that is bharat it means that india is equal to bharat itself that is you can call it as bharat also you can call it as india also and after that there is a comma and then they are telling that it shall be union of states it is telling that it shall be union of states
that means it is a collection of these particular states that is collection of let's say these many states and it is calling it as union of states because no state can go outside of this okay that means these states which are existing they are not existing because of any agreement with the union there are they are not there with the any agreement with the union if they are part of india they are part of india without any conditions and they cannot leave it they cannot leave it okay so it is called as indissoluble okay that is no state has the right to separate from indian union and hence it is called as union of state india that is bharat first article sub clause 1 says about the name of this particular land which we have taken here on part of the earth okay so this is just to understand and remember these things in a little more detail so that it is not that complex also that is why i'm taking it really slow in order to make you understand from the very basics so it is saying india that is bharat it is telling about the name and they are also giving the first condition itself that no state can ever leave this particular uh, this particular union okay so no state has the right to separate from the indian union that is the country is one integral unit itself even though there are lot of states it is one integral unit and hence it is called as union of states so i hope you have understood about this thing next first uh, article 1 sub clause 2 it says that the states and territories thereof shall be as specified in the first schedule these states and the territories are mentioned in the first schedule see while we were discussing about the schedule also i told you that these schedules will be very important because we'll try to recall them now and then so the first schedule itself they are saying about territories that we have seen so the article says that whatever are the states and territories which are present in this particular territory in this particular country they are specified in this schedule itself so the names and the details they have mentioned in the first schedule itself in the first schedule itself so first schedule has the list of states and union territories and their corresponding territories that is how many states are there how many union territories are there etc now you mention in the comment section what is the exact number of states and uts at this point of a time states and uts at this point of a time for now you also know that jammu and kashmir is not the state not a state now and also dadar and nagar haveli and the and daman and diu they were separate union territories now they are one only now what is the number of these states and union territories if you know you comment down the answer in the comment section so uh, article 1 sub clause 2 says that the states and the territories thereof shall be as specified in the first schedule itself now the very important part one sub clause 3 one sub clause 3 it says that the territory of india shall comprise they are telling it is territory of india why they are telling it as territory of india why they are not mentioning it as states correct why they are mentioning it as territory of india rather than the states because in case of territory of india it includes territories of the states also that is whatever the states are there that also it has and union territories also it has this especially this particular thing has been asked a lot of times in the examination this is very very important that is what comprises of territory of india it comprises of states also union territories also and these are mentioned in the first schedule these are mentioned in the first schedule along with that whatever are the territories that may be acquired by this country whatever will be the future regions which will be acquired by this particular country will also be part of the territory of india for example let us consider this as india for now okay let us consider just an example this as india for now now let us say if there is any occupation of this particular territory or this particular territory later on this will also be part of india only right so they have mentioned in the article only previously that any such territories that may be acquired by india is also considered as territory of india so they are making it very clear initially only 
I hope you have understood about the article number one. Article number one says about the name of the country and then union of states. Why it is telling about union of states? Because they can't live. They are indestructible. Second one says about the states and territories. They are already been mentioned in the territories. Uh, this uh, first schedule, which is the union and the territories, the names of the states and the territories has been mentioned in the. uh first schedule itself then the third one article 1 sub clause 3 says that the territory of india shall comprise of the territories of the states also union territories also and the future territories which may be acquired so this is how we'll be going ahead with from next part we'll start to discuss about more articles a little because this was the basics and we had to start from the very beginning so we'll we'll stop with the first article itself from the next part we'll discuss about next articles okay i hope you are liking the series please do let us know in the comment section as well or whatever is your opinion re related to that so usually we'll be studying about uh, about uh, indian polity from the given core books itself but if we are looking at the syllabus they are also mentioning about the constitution of india correct so if you are reading from the constitution itself that to at least important parts it is not important to remember all the articles as such the as i have mentioned previously only we have to remember a few important articles but if you are reading all the articles and understanding what they are trying to tell then it will be easier for us to recall in the examination also and we'll have that clarity so what has been defined what has not been defined what has been mentioned in different articles at least those things will be understanding so in the next part we'll discuss few more articles thank you